Now, this is a good one. This is a good one. Do you know why I think this is a good one? I think you'll really like this one. Does the female finally calm down? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Actually, she does not. She blows it out of proportion. <clears throat> Actually, she does. Does she? Yeah. Ow. Oh, my God, my wrist. It's like it's Sunday. I can't. <laughs> okay. Who wants your coffee and I want my coffee? Oh, I 100% agree. I do want my coffee. You want your own coffee then, huh? Yeah. All right, let's grab coffee. All right, let's get coffee. <laughs> 34 female, 34 male. She said my needs don't matter. I said if she honestly believes that, we shouldn't be together. My significant other and I have been married for 10 plus years. She is a stay-at-home mom. I work from home and try to be involved as much as I can. My daily routine, 7 to 8 a.m., I get our one-year-old daughter up, dressed, fed, 8.30 to 5, work, 5 to 7.30, dinner, bath, bed. Over Christmas break, I thought things were going well, and I was watching our daughter to try to give my wife some time to herself. Today, we had a huge fight because we both want to have some kind of time off over the holidays to do our own stuff, like spend a few hours on a hobby. Now the holiday is coming to a close and neither of us feel like we've really had much time to ourselves. I realize this part of parenting, but I believe that we both need to find a way to recharge. Today, during a fight, she said my needs are being met with work and hers aren't being met at all by watching our daughter and that she that her needs are more important than mine. I said, that doesn't sound right. We need to find a balance so we can both feel like our needs are being met. And I just, and just because I have work doesn't mean I don't need a break too. I said that there is no way for everything to be perfectly equal. If she is saying that me having a job means my needs don't matter, then I would be in perpetually indebted to her she just shrugs she pushed and said no my needs are more important than yours i said i don't accept that and if you really feel that way i don't know how we can be together as you might expect things got worse <laughs> am i looking at this the wrong way i thought both our needs are important and valid and by needs i'm saying like spending a couple hours in the garage doing some woodworking or something i'm really at a loss here and I don't know how to give any more than I already am. First, I'd like to say thank you. For what? Not having kids. Oh, yeah, I know. Ugh. Fuck that. Well, you know, <coughs> I don't know. It sounds like he needs People to splurge on like a idea. kitchen remodel. You know, spruce up her office a little. <laughs> <laughs> do you like that? I did. Do you like that? Maybe go redo a bathroom or yeah, two. Yeah. Maybe a nice maybe a nice laundry area for her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that the breakdown in communication mm -hmm. is that the whole needs thing. I, I think that he knows what his needs are, but I don't think he knows what hers are. Also, I think what what he needs to do in this situation as a guy, right? You say, sure, no problem. You need your time. And you give in immediately. And then that way, when she comes back around, you say, cool, do you feel better? Are you in a better mood? Can you rationally talk to me? <laughs> oh, good. Be really <laughs> condescending. Agree right off the bat. And then go directly into condescending. Do you feel better? Yeah. Are your needs met? Are you okay? Do you need a snack? <laughs> she sounds like she's hangry is what I'm getting at. And then you, when a girl's hangry, you don't talk to her. You feed her as fast as possible. <laughs> and then once she's fed, then you can have a normal conversation with her. Because this she can't. This is an ongoing problem. This is not just a one moment hangry thing. I'm just saying she sounds hangry. She sounds hangry. He should say, yeah, no problem, honey. You need you need to go do some hobbies. Here's a snack. Go do some hobbies. Have a great, you know, couple hours. Just, just toughen it up, right? Yeah. And then she's going to be in a good mood. And then when she comes back, be like, you know what? You probably need a little break too, huh? Are you angry? No. Do you need something? I just know how to deal with 
<laughs> wives that are irrational. And most of the time it's because one, they're hungry. Two, they need sleep. Three, they need both of those things in them for you to go away. That's it. It's yes, simple. Yes, exactly. Her needs are, she needs time by herself. I know. And that's where I'm saying that's what he should do. Make her a snack. Maybe put her down for a nap. Give her some time alone. Give her a kitten. Get her a kitten. Yeah. These are small things. <laughs> Is it a small thing every time I get a kitten? <clears throat> I think we're done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wondering. I think we're fucking kitten out, Kate. <laughs> I don't think I can do it. I don't think I can do it either. Thank God. But that doesn't mean, like, I know you'd just be like, you come home and you're like, I found a fucking raccoon. Oh, my God. I want a raccoon so bad. I know. I found. Oh, my God. A place that sells two otters. We just got rid of our bathtub. Just saying. <sighs> Can't happen now. Well, maybe. Okay. Hear me out. What would happen if you had a trailer? A little kid pool in the living room. <laughs> Get the, for the otters. fuck out of here. What? Not a chance. Have you watched otters play in ice and stuff? Kitty. They have so much fun. You can play outside. Okay. Raccoon. I'd get a raccoon. I think it'd be pretty fucking cool. They would, they're just and a wolf. so menacing. A raccoon and a wolf. I, see, and I, a don't really want a wolf. I don't really want I don't really want a wolf. I know you don't They're want to. They're so big. I know. I want a dog that's even bigger than our giant fucking dogs. <laughs> You're like, oh yeah. No, I just want. I want a raccoon. All right. I want its little hands. <laughs> Feed it snacks. See, that's the other thing you got to do to put a good girl in a good mood. You distract her with fucking kittens and animals. This is all. I just, would literally have I'm an entire rescue. Proving my point right like, here, people. <laughs> Oh, I love animals. If I could, I would have so many animals. It'd be a little little rescue zoo. Yeah. Goats. Goats. Raccoons. Raccoons. Oh, fox. A fox? Yeah. Seems. I don't know about that. It seems like I don't foxes know. Watching, a lot of work. Watching those foxes play with German shepherds just like melts my heart. Like I could just see Monty and a fox playing on our bed and just destroying the house. Not a fucking chance. That's outside stuff. No, they play. Uh, thank God. I love animals. Thank, thank God Petco watch. doesn't sell <laughs> raccoons and foxes. <laughs> Fuck me. Just be like, oh yeah, guess what I got today? <laughs> no, you went to Costco. No, I went to PetSmart too. Yeah. I brought home some more animals. <laughs> Thank God you don't like fish. Oh, yeah. No, that's... Or rodents or reptiles. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, I mean, I feel lucky in that aspect. This was a huge 180 from... Yeah, I know. I feel like this one's pretty much over. Because <laughs> all I can think about is just little raccoon hands and like <laughs> otters holding hands while they sleep on their back floating around in a bathtub. It would be amazing. I would just feed them treats like all the times, like marshmallows, like little raccoons just shoving marshmallows in their mouth. It would be the cutest fucking thing ever. It would be the fattest fucking raccoon because I'd just be like, here, and just watch it grab food out of its hands. Oh my God, that's so funny. <sighs> little bandits. My partner and I planned a vacation together. His mom demanded she come. And he let her. Nope. <laughs> I know. What is it with these guys that just can't be like, say no to family? I don't know. Or people in general. Maybe not just guys. All of them. Just, just say people. no. Just say no to family. Just say no. Yeah. Just no. Nope. I'm good. <laughs> okay. My boyfriend, 20 male, planned a vacation for him and I, 22 female. Over winter break. We have been together for only about seven months. We stopped by his apartment to grab his stuff and his mom was there. She jumped in the back seat of his car, began talking to him in Spanish. I don't speak Spanish, so I'm not sure what she said. He explained to me that she was worried about us going on this trip because his car was old and that she didn't want us to go. He said he was going to convince her to let us go and they both went into the apartment to talk. He came back a few minutes later 
and she sat in the car again, this time with a huge bag packed. He said she began crying because of how worried she was that she would be coming with us on the trip, but that she would that she would stay in a separate hotel room. He paid for the whole trip, so I don't know if I have a right to be upset. But we're two hours into the eight-hour car drive, and I've cried the whole time because I feel so overwhelmed. I find it weird that even though he's an adult, he let her completely change our vacation, and I'm worried that this may cause problems in the future. I know that he loves her very much, but shouldn't he learn to say no to his mom? I'm not sure if I'm overreacting because I've been off my medication for a few days. I may be overthinking this. What do I do? I'm so stressed, but I haven't said or done anything yet because I don't want to cause problems. How fun. I can only imagine <laughs> if you and I were going on vacation and your mom got in the car with a bag, the shit I would say. Yeah, I'd be like, have fun. Yeah, but you would never, ever have to worry about that. Well, I know, but you, you got to put yourself in that situation. And I, I would just, I would just get my bag and be like, have, have fun. Have fun. Like, you two have fun on your vacation. Yeah. Because I'm not going. Yeah. Are they married? No. No, just dating. Just dating. Why would he think this was a good idea? Because his mom cried. So? <laughs> I know. You buy her a box of tissue. You don't <laughs> You don't pack her a bag. Right? I know. That's insane. Why would I'm, you why would you think this was an okay? Well, and why do you have to get your mom's permission when you're like twenty something years old to go on a vacation? I don't know. And if so, your car breaks down, what's what is what is she gonna do? Exactly. Cry? Sit on the side of the road and cry? Yeah. And say, now we're all screwed. Oh my god. Yeah. Why would you ever subject? Like it's your vacation. Absolutely. Don't do dumb things like that. <laughs> and yes, if she was able to cry and get her way onto a trip this fucking easily, what happens? I break with the up next with one? him. Yeah, I yeah. break up with him because he's not going to sever those ties with his mom, yep. and probably not in a way that is going to work out in anybody's favor. Yeah. Like it's never going to work out in your favor because his mom's going to cry and she's going on your honeymoon now. Yeah. That's exactly <laughs> what I was thinking. I was like, like, Oh, the next time's the honeymoon. Yeah. You have a kid. She's going to be right down there to catch that football coming out. I mean, he's not going to be able to. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. Like, I don't know how uh, you got to say no. You have to set boundaries. Yes. If you're having a, if you planned a vacation with your girlfriend and you got a shitty car, then get triple a, you know, don't, don't, don't help your mom. Don't go into the apartment and help your mom pack a fucking bag. Exactly. Like that's not why, helpful. Yeah. Why? I just want to know what was going through his head. Like, Oh, she's going to be cool. If I walk out when we walk yeah, out of the house, this is going to be totally fine. <laughs> So stupid. So there's an update. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I was a worried. lot of you suggested that I should have gotten out of the car as soon as his mom got in to come on our vacation with us. Unfortunately, I sort of panic and froze in the moment, which is why I did not end up doing that. We got to our destination. She did go to her own room and I had a talk with my boyfriend about the situation. I told him that it wasn't the original plan to have his mom come. That I didn't know how her coming would help if an emergency did in fact happen with the car. And that his and that has raised a lot of concerns about our future. I told him that although I know he loves her very much, she can't come everywhere with us just because she's worried about him. He apologized and agreed that having her come was inappropriate and unnecessary. He said that she cried and was freaking out about him going on vacation and wasn't going to let him go at all. And that letting her come was their quote unquote compromise, but that he, he can see that this wasn't okay to do. He agreed to have a talk with her, set firm boundaries in place and not let this happen again. He seemed very sincere, but I told him that when we came back to town, I would still like some space to think things out. It was a very short vacation, only three days. So 
I did stay the whole vacation. I got home last night and have taken some time to myself so far to think things through and rather or not, I'd be continuing or ending the relationship to allow my boyfriend to talk to his mom. If I do decide to stay with him, I'd be very adamant that nothing similar to this should happen again. A few of you asked about me being off my medication. It was, it wasn't intentional. I got caught up with school and forgot to get my refill for antidepressants before the vacation. I think that's why I may have been crying so much over the ordeal. LOL. Remember, she laughed out loud when she forgot her antidepressants. <laughs> when she forgot to acted refill like a her. fucking insane person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but that's a bad excuse. Just because you didn't refill an antidepressant prescription doesn't mean like you couldn't rationally think about it. No, she's saying that's just why she cried. Okay. Like she's not saying that it, that was like, it was just her reaction of just like crying. But the whole thing is, is I mean, he can go ahead and try to set boundaries with his mom, but if she came on this vacation and everything, you set precedence. Well, and not only that, the whole trying to set these boundaries is going to take a while. Yeah. That's not an immediate like, oh, mom, you can never do that again. And then she's going to be like, okay, that's fine. Boom. Boundary set. And I'm never going to cry. That's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's ridiculous. Yeah. In the first place. Like the fact that he just crumbled like that. <laughs> I know. Like, oh, I'll just bring mom along. Yeah. For our romantic vacation. It's okay. Mom, you can come. <laughs> that's our compromise. Is that I still get to go. I'm a grown adult <laughs> on a vacation that I paid for. Mm-hmm. And our compromise is you get to come because you get- you're so worried. <laughs> no. That is not how this is going down. <laughs> no. Screw that. Yeah. That's stupid. I just don't understand why you'd act that way. Yeah, I don't understand how that was a compromise. Yeah. I wonder if he paid for his mom's hotel room, too. Probably. <laughs> I'm so worried about you. I have no money, though. So you're going to have to pay for my room because now I'm coming with you. Well, and she definitely should take a break from him so he could be like, oh, yeah, I did mess up. Like, that was ridiculous. Well, and she just wanted to rationally think about it. Like, am I going? And obviously write it on Reddit. She needed, sure. like, another week of antidepressants. Yeah. <laughs> Just to, to just to level out, just to just to kick back in. Stupid. Okay, twenty six female, twenty three male, together for two years. My boyfriend is angry. I don't have a job. And how old is she? Twenty six. Look it up. And he's twenty three. Okay. We've been together for two years. Six months ago, he moved in with me. And that's when the argument started. My boyfriend works full time and I don't. I live off of an inheritance. I own the apartment, but we split all the bills and groceries 50-50. Ever since he moved in, he's been nagging me to get a job. And quite frankly, it started to get on my nerves. His reasoning is is that it's unfair that he has to work and I don't. Anytime I try to have a reasonable conversation, it ends up in an argument. And I don't know what to do. I don't want to break up with him because I love him, but I hate the constant fighting. Um, In my free time, I'm usually fixing up the apartment, laundry, cooking, cleaning, etc., and spending time on some of my hobbies. So pretty much a combination of those two things. And I help out financially as well. We do work together with the apartment tasks when he's home, though. Sounds like he needs to shut up. Yeah, it's not like he's paying for her. Yeah. It's, it's not like... And, and his argument of it not being fair is stupid. Yeah. If he, if he felt that way, like, hey, maybe you should get a job because right now we're young in our lives mm-hmm. and you could grow like a career or something like that. And then if we decide to get married or maybe it's better to just get out of the house for a little while, mm-hmm. maybe the social part of it. But for him to right. say it's not fair is stupid. It's a, it's a dumb argument. I mean, she's paying 50-50 just like It's her is. apartment. She owns it. Yeah. And you're lucky. Just shut up. I know. Yeah. But, and that's... I Exactly. I could see the argument of... We're young now. 
So let's well, work yeah. really hard. Well, and not only that, you know, it, to me, it sounds like it's a sizable <laughs> inheritance if she feels at 26 that she doesn't have to work. Mm-hmm. But your argument of it's unfair. Yeah, stupid. Well, okay. So you obviously didn't grow up with money and she did. Yeah, it's, it's, or something. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's it, that's already just the hand that you're dealt. The fact that you're saying it's unfair. I could see if she was getting into a depression or something and not doing good, like you said, like going out and getting the social aspect of it. Mm-hmm. But just the fact that it's unfair that she has money to pay the bills and he has to go out and work to be able to pay the bills is ridiculous. Yeah, and it's like, dude, you're in your 20s. Uh, what does he want to do? Like, st- have her leave every day just like he has to? <laughs> yeah, I know. It just. Well, and the other thing, put yourself in, in her position. If he was the one with the inheritance and didn't have to leave and work every day and own the apartment and she did, would he feel the need to leave and, and go get a job just because it's unfair to the other person? Yeah. Plus, they're both too young to just realize, like, just getting out of the house and going to work is good for you. Yeah. It's just good for you. Like mentally, physically, Mm -hmm. you have to get out of there. I think they, you know, definitely should talk about it more, but it sounds like he's stupid (laughs) and his arguments don't make sense. Well, if you're going to have an argument about it, like come with, come up with something better than it's not fair. Yeah, is she having, like, any depression? Does she have to get out of the house? Is it, uh, w- is it the money doesn't matter? It's, she just needs to go volunteer? Like, does she just have to walk out of the house with you and down to the bus stop? <laughs> I like how you just assume that he rides the bus. <laughs> he just sounds dumb. Yeah. Because that argument was stupid. Because it's not fair. Because it's unfair. Well, Just life isn't fair. Yeah. Then, then, then play the game and then get married to her and then quit your job and then you both can just not go to work. Yeah. No. That sounds like a horrible idea That's, as well. It sounds like a horrible idea, but I'm just saying, <laughs> play the game, buddy. Yeah. Well, he's 23. Yeah, they're idiots. Yeah. They're young. They're stupid. Uh, I can no longer do anything because my wrist hurts. You can't do handful of things when your wrist doesn't hurt (laughs) open salsa oh fuck you you can't open (laughs) salsa either that thing was so (gasps) on tight (laughs) it only took us five days and it's sitting out on the counter smacking it against everything okay 22 male 22 female my boyfriend likes me better with makeup i feel awful I'm an okay looking girl, but I've been told I look like a bombshell with my hair and makeup done. Without it, I'm just okay. Not pretty. We went out last night and I dressed up for the first time in a while. He was fawning over me the whole time, staring at me, kissing me. When we got home, he was telling me that he's so lucky to be with me. I'm out of his league and he can't believe we're together. And he's with the prettiest girl in the room. It made me feel so good. We had sex. And he was so into it and had fun. I don't know. He doesn't act like that normally. It made me feel like a princess, but it also made me feel sad that he's not always complimenting me like that. Am I being crazy? Yes. But it sounds like they're both crazy. Yeah. I mean, what kind of guy, I guess, says shit like that? Hey, you look okay, but when you put your makeup on... Then you look really great. (laughs) I know. So stupid. Most guys we know are just like, don't really care about makeup. No, I could care less if you wear makeup. Yeah. You comfortable? Cool. I'm happy. Right. (laughs) (laughs) You ready to go? Great. Let's go out. Wait, you you can leave right now or leave in 45 minutes? Let's go now. You need to get all dolled up to go to Costco, then go by yourself. Yeah, I will not be ready in 45 minutes because I'm ready now. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's a weird way to... It just seems 
counterproductive to say that to your girlfriend. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't think. Like. It's not very it, smart it, to be like, no. you know what? You look like a bombshell when, when you put all this effort forth. But when you don't, you just, you're, you're not you even look really, average. Yeah, you're not even really that pretty. Ugh. Just asking for just it. Take a fry pan and just smack him. How many snacks he's gonna have to give her to put her in a good mood? <laughs> you know how much food she's not gonna fucking make him. <laughs> yeah, it's like, dude, just shut up. Yeah, <laughs> you are making life so much harder than it needs to be. Right, that's what I was just thinking. I'm like, why did you just make your life so much more difficult than it really had to be? Yeah, just you could have just fawned all over her, had great sex. And, and not said a word. Fun all over her when she's like. In sweatpants. In sweatpants. Eating fucking Cheez Its and Tootsie Rolls. Done. I mean, that's a good way to go. I'm in. <laughs> a few kittens on her lap. <laughs> Just go snuggle her. <laughs> <laughs> it smells like a sunflower factory. <laughs> Fucking I'm in. <laughs> it's like gold. It smells like salt and triscuits. <laughs> <sighs> yes, please. Right? All right. I'll do it. I like my women smelling like Worcestershire sauce. Oh, my gosh. Don't even. So here's. Okay, I have not seen how Worcestershire sauce is made. You didn't right? do it? No, because okay, here's the thing. I know enough about Worcestershire sauce What's to in know it? to, yes. Don't ever to watch Don't it. watch a video on how Worcestershire sauce is made. It popped it's, up. It's just, oh, I know. I, it's it's trying to pop up on my shit and you too. You just go boom. Oh, yeah, because I know what it's made out of, and it is not. And I like Worcestershire sauce, so I'm not going to watch that's, it be made. That's exactly why I told you I was watching it, and I'm like, this is. Pretty disgusting. Yeah, I know enough about it to not go into that rabbit hole. And I know how much it would negatively affect you. Yeah. And I was like, please don't ever watch this. Yeah. Because I know you will, like, really, it'll really bug you. I know. Because don't. It's so gross. Oh, I know it is. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. It's not right. That is a PSA for anybody out there who likes Worcestershire sauce. Do not watch any video on how it's made. Nope. It It will will ruin it for you and you will never eat it again. You will not like what you see. No. (laughs) All right. 39 male, 41 female. My wife is 100% completely, wholly incapable of having a productive argument. (laughs) I don't know how many more words he could have used to say that she sucks at talking and communicating. Yeah. Man, just theme of the day yeah the only tools in her kit are dismiss counterattack, threaten and raise the emotional stakes that's literally it i feel like he's angry <laughs> i feel like he's sitting in the bathroom door locked and he's like i totally won that argument you know but he's isolated from his house and he's afraid yeah There are universes where all pirates or clowns or whatever, but there's not a single one where she said, I don't understand you are feeling that way. Let's make a change. He's upset. Mm -hmm. I've tried everything I can think of. I model relentlessly. Explain the progress from every angle I can imagine. We've been to therapy and the therapist basically echoed every strategy I've mentioned. Not a. Trying to walk her through the idea of an argument that isn't just unloading a bunch of ammo is like trying to explain rocket science to a cat. There's just absolutely no chance of getting any info through. Neither of our parents ever modeled a healthy argument. My mom was super assertive and my dad would just roll over and follow orders. My wife's dad was always drunk and verbally abusive and her mom never stood up for herself. So we're not exactly set up for success. But still, my motto is that it's not our duty to recreate our parents' marriages, but to craft our own. In this case, it involves a serious overhaul of our conflict resolution skills. My wife is wholly opposed to overhauling her conflict resolution skills. 
She's constantly at the end of her rope complaining about something or other, and I try to get the point. Okay, we know what you don't like. What do you want to happen? And she never has an answer. Bonus comp contemplation. Ah, compilation. I'm resolute in holding her to task if we're in front of our kids. Ten and four. Take I refuse to let them think that the way we communicate is correct or that one parent gets to make out demands and the other rolls over and takes it. So if she starts her bullshit, I calmly call her out. They went and had kids. <laughs> 10 years old. So this has been happening for a decade. Yeah, they've been married for a long time. Well, it doesn't say how long they've been married. I really like this guy's wording. I, mean, I know. He really. I feel really like I could be friends with him. He's a great communicator. He has a lot of good I love words. His, I, I, love I, love, his, I love his wording and stuff. I love. Uh, yeah. Like he's very passionate about this subject. Um, I like how he's trying to uh, break generational things. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. They've been to therapy. Yeah, and it sounds like that didn't go anywhere. <laughs> Which is why they probably stopped going because the therapist was like, yeah, your conflict resolution sucks. I mean, I see where he's going. Like, even if. Even if the way she argues with him or the way she kind of just unloads and dumps everything. Okay, that's one thing. Maybe that's how some people, ha you know, that's they boiled over and they just have to let it unload and they feel better for another mm -hmm. couple weeks or whatever. But if you can't, like, say what you do want, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Like, I'm listening to you say what you don't like. Okay, great. What what works for you? What mm -hmm. do you do like? And if you can't tell me, gone. Yeah. Well, and sometimes, like you said, just sometimes you just have to say, like, if you're, you know, if it's about somebody at work or something, you just have to let the person vent and then, and then be done with it. Mm -hmm. But if you actually want, if, if it's an actual, like, conflict between the two of you, you yeah. both have to work at it. Yeah. I mean, we, we've given each other a disclaimer and say, look, I'm just going to vent about this stuff. I just need you to listen yeah. and I want zero advice. Yeah, I don't want you to solve my problem. I don't want Nothing. you to I talk. just want you to listen. I just want you to listen. You're like, okay, this makes life so much easier. One, yeah. it's probably not about me. And two, you just need, you just need to vent. Yeah. I'm in. Exactly. I think that's, that is a really good one to put out there though. Is that you just, in the beginning, you just say exactly what you need out of the conversation. Mm -hmm. I just need to vent. I don't want you to solve my problems. I don't want you to actually even say anything about it, that I did anything wrong, that I did anything great, nothing. Just sit there and listen to the whole story and what happened. And yeah. we're good. Yeah. I don't, kids? They went out yeah. and had kids. Mm -hmm. It sounds like this, it's not like... You know, these are habits, right? These are communication habits. So she's had this forever. Mm -hmm. So having a 10-year-old makes me think that they've been together 10 plus years. And for 10 years, he's put up with this shit? Yeah. Well, so one of the comments is the problem existed before marriage. Why is it now an issue, but before it was fine enough to marry, be together for years, and have children? And... OP writes, right? Sometimes when I'm with my own thoughts for a little too long, I'll go there. She showed me who she was years ago. Why did we go through with the marriage? I think in my heart of hearts, I thought we were both going to give it the old college try. Like putting effort into the relationship is so basic. I couldn't imagine someone not doing it. Being in a marriage and not trying to communicate effectively is like being on a basketball team and not agreeing that the goal is to score more points than the other team. Like, surely that can't happen, right? I really like this guy. I know. I really kind of want to message him and be like, do you want to be our friend at least? No. Well, your friend. No, I'm good. No? I'm you don't want more friends? <laughs> I got three good friends. That's all I need. No, I know. But he really does put some good points out there. I know. He's a, he's, he 
He's just a communicator. He is. It's hilarious that he marries this lady who apparently he should he should write like advice for like an advice column. He should have a blog. He should. A marriage blog. Because you know what? He's really good with words and um analogies and he's great at it. He should have like like a blog and it would be hilarious. You know? And he could just actually he should yeah. Or he should just videotape his fights and then post them online for the whole world to see. <laughs> Like bum fights? Yeah. <laughs> Is that what, when you said that, that's the first thing that came to my mind was that old YouTube thing from years ago. Yeah, those fights. are physical fights. I know. With homeless people. So. <laughs> I thought that was I'd very say a little different. In the title. <laughs> well, I know. I'm I sure, just, but, it, but I'm sure it would take off just like bum fights did. You know, if he just, every time his wife started an insane, irrational argument, he's like, hold on. Pulls out the phone, hits record, sets it up, and he's like, go for it. And then when she's like, what's that about? It'll be like, I just want to be able to play back how fucking dumb you sound every time I'm in a bad mood. How irrational you are. Yeah. Like, every time I'm in a bad mood, I'm going to play this back, and it's going to put a smile on my face, because you're obviously insane. Yeah. Calm down, Lisa. Lisa.